Okay, uh, welcome back to the Deed Feed. Uh, we are going to be going through the Lee County auction on January 11th. Uh, we're just going to take an approach to this as if I was investing, I'm going to set a budget, I'm going to go through the properties how I normally would in a tax deed auction. Uh, and this is Lee County, Florida. So Fort Myers, Cape Coral, uh, Bonita Springs, uh, Estero, you know, the just the, on the west coast of Florida there on the Gulf. Um, quick shout out to uh, Eric Rosen, one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, and so let's go ahead and get this started. So uh, I'm in the Lee County sale, and I'm going to go to uh, January 11th, right? So, so typically the way I'm going to approach this auction uh, out of the gate <clears throat> is uh, I'm, I'm going to try to disqualify properties based on whatever metrics I set for what I'm looking for. Um, you know, there's a couple things that we would need to discuss beforehand, or at least need to have an idea of what we were trying to do uh, before the auction even begins. Are we looking at vacant land, or are we looking at structures? Because uh, there's going to be two different strategies. Um, vacant land right now really is a gold mine in Florida. If you're if you're getting in, or if you've gotten in on that train, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and if it's not something you've considered, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, two years ago when I was looking at this, I used to turn my nose up at vacant lots. I'd say, you know, well, there's no real value there. I didn't want to uh, participate in that. But now looking at the auctions that are, are happening over the last year, uh, you know, it's, in my opinion, I think it's the best option going into these deed auctions is going after land. But there's something more attractive going after structures, right? I think anytime, you know, if you if you can buy a house at auction for 65 cents on the dollar, right? Who wouldn't want to do that? That's, you know, that's great. So really, I think a lot of it comes down to budget. Um, I think another advantage that you have going after land is you don't have to worry about tenants, right? I don't have to worry about the condition of the property as much as I would if there was a structure. Like, what's the plumbing uh, septic tank, like, you know, I don't have to worry about that so much with vacant land. Uh, I don't have to worry about if someone's going to refuse to leave, am I going to have to file an unlawful detainer, right? That's, uh, it costs a couple bucks, but, um, with vacant land, it really is, it's almost completely transactional. You know, uh, you're, you're getting the deed to the property, you quiet the title. Uh, some people use Products like clear to sell and tax title services. I it depends who your end user is, right? If your end user is that may find you off the MLS, then you probably want a quiet title. Uh, if your end user is a contractor who's going to build, you can use you know, clear to sell or tax title services, uh, depending on um, what title company they're using. And so, a lot of developers will. You know, they like Meridian, uh, they like, you know, certain certain title companies. So, you, you know, if you look at that information beforehand, you have a clear plan going in, you know, you sh that part should be pretty easy. So I haven't really decided uh, what we're going to do, what I'm going to do with this auction. Um, you know, and I'm just scrolling through and it looks like everything I'm seeing uh, is pretty much vacant. Like, you know what? I think I'm actually going to go to the, the January 4th auction. Um, that sounds better because I did briefly look at this auction and there's actually some good instructive moments in here. Uh, so the first few properties, I'm really going to take my time because um, what I need to do is I need to build a watch list. Um, watch list is uh, basically this is essentially what I'm going to refer to moving forward instead of going straight to the calendar and then picking an auction. So, so backtrack, rewind. January 4th auction 2022 and so uh, the first property that's on here uh, 20050 Williams Drive uh, this is in Fort Myers Beach it's uh, assessed at I don't know nine hundred thousand dollars if you're not familiar with that area it's you know it's a it's a nice area um, Lehigh Acres we have a bunch of land here um, I'll be honest with you, I stay out of Lehigh Acres. Um, it's unincorporated territory. Uh, there's some interesting laws there. Uh, interesting is not the right word. There's some, I don't know. It's not really a place that I want to invest. Uh, everyone is different though. So, um, okay, Bonita Springs, nice area. Bonita Springs, uh, Stero. This looks like it's a vacant lot based on that assessed value. Uh, and then Cape Coral. Uh, so I'm just trying to get an idea of what's in the auction to see I don't know where our time might be best spent. Uh, structure, structure. 
land, 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 land. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do uh, to make this good for uh, to make this good for the video, and so anyone can pull something from this. We'll do a couple of structures, and then we'll pick like five or six lots. Um, you know, when we're looking at these structures, you're going to have to have a bigger budget too, uh, especially because what I'm seeing is in like, you know, Fort Myers Beach and Bonita Springs. Like you're going to have to have a couple of bucks. Um, I don't know. I'd probably put the minimum you would need somewhere between 60 and 80,000 looking at these assessed values. If we're looking at land, um, you know, that changes things a little bit. Uh, and I'm still scrolling here. Um, if we're looking at land, it changes things a little bit. We could maybe set a budget of 30 or less, and we'd probably be able to pick up something in Cape Coral or, um, you know, or even maybe Fort Myers. Fort Myers would be, uh, would be good. Uh, what was that? Uh, these are all redeemed. Okay, there's one, one on this seventh page that I wasn't sure about. Uh, which is this 1501 Gretchen. Uh, and this is a vacant lot. Okay. Uh, we'll go to the property appraiser. And, you know, it says it's vacant land, but <clears throat> we'll go to the property appraiser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set two arbitrary budgets. <clears throat> First budget I'm going to set is uh, you know, okay, we're going after uh, a structure. So now what? Um, so I'm going to set my budget at $100,000. And uh, just again, it's an arbitrary number, but I'm going to say, you know, say $100,000 is my budget. I'm going to try and qualify and disqualify properties based on their assessed value. Uh, now, the first property that's in this auction, that 20050 Williams, uh, I did take a look at this earlier. Uh, it has an IRS lien on it. Um, you know, an IRS lien is not really a cause for concern the way like a code enforcement lien would be. Uh, a lot of people look at these. Uh, so there's a lot of investors that see an IRS lien and they immediately turn the other way because they're like, oh, I don't want, you know, government lien. It's going to survive. Um, IRS doesn't operate the way other government liens do. You know, it's like the IRS and like the SBA. And so essentially what happens is that the IRS has a right of redemption, Right. So it doesn't survive in the same way that another government lien may. It's, you know, a lot like, uh, like a mortgage or an HOA lien. So uh, the IRS uh, has 120 days to redeem after the sale. So let's just say we find a property we like. It's, maybe it's ARV is 80000 We pick it up for 52. I don't know. Um, well, we'll just say 50 for round numbers. Uh, the IRS can turn around and pay us $50,000 with 6% interest. Uh, and then they can take title to the property and sell it on the MLS or do whatever they're going to do in order to satisfy that IRS debt. Uh, IRS doesn't really do this a whole lot. Just know that they can. Uh, my understanding uh, is that typically they'll only do this if the the estimated equity is enough to satisfy the entire debt. So, uh, you know, if, if in that previous scenario where we paid 50, maybe it's worth 80, uh, you know, they're going to have to pay us uh, 53,000, right? No, nope, fifth. Yeah, 53,000. Sorry. Have to pay us 53,000, uh, leaving 27. Uh, a twenty-seven thousand dollar difference. So maybe if the IRS lien was eighteen thousand dollars, it's something that they would do. Um, so, uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at what this property is. So I'm just going to go to the property appraiser, and something interesting happens when you go to the property appraiser here. Uh, it says that it can't find the parcel. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, and you may see this every now and then, I'm going to copy the parcel ID. And I am going to do a search in their database. And I get uh, no matches, right, uh, for given criteria, or uh, the result is exempt from public disclosure per 119.071. It's a Florida statute, and it has to do with um, 
public employees or uh, it could possibly pertain to someone who's under some sort of legal investigation. Uh, so right here, this is enough for me to really sort of walk away from this property. Um, there, you're not going to be able to find anything on the property appraiser. You're not going to be able to find anything uh, in the tax collector office. You're not really going to be able to find a lot on this property. Um, for the most part, this is just um, a headache. And there's always another there's always another tax deed auction. So instead of wasting, you know, the time to go through and really figure out what this property is, just go out of it. So we're not going to add this. So I got my hundred thousand dollar budget. The next property I see here on San Carlos Boulevard is uh, assessed at nine hundred thousand dollars almost. Um, this is uh, Sunoco gas station. Uh, so this is actually. Um, you know, and it's a fully operating gas station as far as I can tell, at least as of March of 2019. And I, I do know where this is, uh, right over the bridge. So right when you go over the bridge, especially if you're doing the ferry to the Keys, that's right over, just right where that white truck is. You turn in there and you can take a ferry to the uh, to Key West. <clears throat> um, and uh, so this, uh, Sunoco's fully functioning as far as I know as of today, but you know, this is a commercial property. So when we were talking about structures, I wasn't really referring to commercial and I should have been a little bit more clear. I'm looking at residential. Um, if we go here and then go to the property appraiser from this page, we can see, uh, you know, it's, uh, we can see the property description, um, or we can see the land use code, all that stuff. So, uh, here is the pictometry. Well, it's really old pictometry. Let's get uh, sales and transactions. I like to see the sales history on a property. Uh, give you a lot of, give you an idea of what's going on. 86, 96, 97, and 2000. Really the last three sales hovering at just uh, between half million and three quarter of a million dollars. Uh, building construction and permit data. Uh, so you can get, you know, find out if they uh, filed like a notice of commencement or something, you know, you can find all that stuff here. But this is all, uh, like I said, this is a little bit more than I really want to jump into uh, for, for this first property. So let's go ahead and close out of this. We're going to go back, return to docket inventory. If you click the back button, it'll always take you to page one. So if you're on page six, and you click the back button, it'll take you to page one, but you click return to docket inventory, it'll uh, take you back to where you were. Uh, so now we're, we're into some land. Now I, I think I, I had mentioned a moment ago, I don't really like Lehigh Acres, so I'm gonna stay out of Lehigh Acres. Um, here, 20, uh, 27625 Michigan Street in Bonita Springs. Let's see where this is. Uh, and I do believe I did look this up earlier. Uh, so it looks like a mobile manufactured, uh, looks older. Um, so there's a, there's an important date. If you're looking at mobile homes, there's an important date to keep in mind. I believe it's July, t July, 1976, uh, prior ho mobile homes built prior to July of 1976. Uh, didn't have any building codes. They didn't have any, um, uh, yeah, any codes to build. So like they, yeah, you could put uh, plywood and a couple of two by fours together and call it a mobile home. Uh, whereas after that date, they had to meet certain codes and qualifications. So uh, it's harder to get insurance on a property, on a mobile home that was built prior to 1976. Uh, let's see if we can just you know, really this first round here, what I'm doing is I'm just sort of getting soft comps. I'm checking Zillow, Realtor, stuff like that. I'm not really going too hard on, on the comps. I'm just trying to get an idea of what is this place and is it gonna be potentially in my budget? Um, so this is a, uh, it says it's actually a single family uh, built in 1956. It's interesting. Definitely looks uh, modular. The lot's 10,000 square feet. Let's see what else we got here. Um, pictures aren't that great. There's a detached carport. Okay, yes, yeah, this very well could be a single family. Um, you know, I'd want to do a little bit more research than just take Zillow's word for, uh, in that case. And so we'll go into the property appraiser and double check. But, um, you know, it looks like the value on this property is probably over $200,000, even though it's older and, uh, uh, square footage is off on each one of these. This says it's 1193. Zillow said eight something, and so 
Uh, one of them might be taking that like detached carport into account with the, the square footage. Again, these are all things you're just sort of noting in the back of your head. Uh, the last sale on this property was at the bottom of the market. It sold for $70,000. we are at the top of the market, so that could be realistic. Um, last uh, year renovated was 1978. Uh, okay, well, let's uh, let's go ahead and I'll tell you what we're, we'll just we'll add it to our watch list regardless you know here's the thing uh, you don't know who's going to show up that day and if no one shows up you don't want to not bid on that right so if you have a budget of a hundred thousand dollars and that thing really is worth 220 for let's say uh, you know you might as well throw throw it all against the wall and try to try to pick that up uh, you might get a bargain and I have I teach people how to do this and that's one of the things that I do for a living and um, outside of deed investing uh, one of my students picked up a deed for 60 65 50 it was in uh, uh, what's that county it begins with the G uh, let's actually look I can't think of the name of it to save my life uh, Gilchrist, yeah. So it was in Gilchrist County. Uh, I picked it up for like sixty-five fifty. Turned around and sold it for twenty-three thousand with a quick claim deed. Didn't have to quiet title. Everything was done within sixty days. And uh, the only reason he picked that house up so cheap is because no one else bid on it. He was literally the only one there bidding. Uh, there were two other proxy bids on the property, but neither of them had enough deposit to participate. So he, yeah, I walked away with the steal. Um. Okay, uh, next we have 26723 Little John Court in Bonita Springs. Again, nice area. Um, let's see what this thing is. Okay, so it looks like these are actually apartments. So we're going to go and uh, we're going to have to look at the legal uh, description. Uh, condo and description unit... Uh, it's PH, it might be a penthouse, but it says uh, Unit 19. Let's, let's just see what Unit 19. Uh, okay. Um, I, I trust Redfin as far as free websites go for comps. I think Redfin's relatively accurate. Um, we've got some photos of the inside here. Um, and I'm not trying to do too much research at first. I'm just trying to get an idea, you know. Um, I don't think, um, I don't think this would be in budget, but, you know, it doesn't hurt again. Um, so we'll add it. We'll do a little bit more due diligence on it. Um, and let's do one more. Uh, this is in Estero, but I like I said, I think this is vacant just based on the assessed value. It's an even thirty-six thousand. Uh, I would bet, yeah. So it's a vacant lot. So put that one on the back burner. Let's see if we can find one more property. Uh, yeah. So that's this is probably based on the assessed value. This is probably closer to our budget. Um, I know Fort Myers and the assessed to market are usually pretty wide difference between the two you know it's interesting there's no um no links that pop up from zillow or otherwise uh it could be there is a demolition you know this photo is april 2019 uh based on the area if i had to guess i'd still say this is probably approaching two hundred thousand dollars uh let's just let's go ahead and see if we can find Yeah, a little bit less. Three one eight seventy four, so one hundred and fifty five thousand. Okay, um, so let's add this to the list because that that is realistic in the scope of things. If uh, we set a hundred thousand dollar budget, it's entirely possible, uh, depending on what else is going on with this property that you could acquire this. Um, looks like Capital One is a lien holder. I don't know who that is. I'm not sure uh, what what fund that is. Uh, but neither here nor there. Okay. Um, so really, I mean, if that's that's it, that's like my first step. I'm like, you know, I'm walking away from this auction. I'm saying, all right, see you later. I'll come back a week later. Uh, and now is when I'm really going to try and build those comps um, and 
and try to get an idea of how much these properties are worth. Now, I'm remote. I live outside of Las Vegas, so it's really hard for me to, you know, uh, go to these properties. And there's tools that I use in order to do that. We'll, again, we'll cover all this stuff in time. Um, but really, the next time I take a crack at this auction, uh, I'm going to go into my watch list. And uh, I have a couple of steps that I'm going to take from here. I have three properties here. Um, and the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find a more realistic comp. Now, uh, I'm sure, you know, if you've been around uh, the real estate industry, you're familiar with PropStream. Uh, PropStream is just, you know, it's a great tool for uh, finding comps along with a lot of other stuff. But I, I use it primarily for finding comps. Um, when we get into dealing with land, you can use it for uh, finding um, developers and things like that. Uh, but I'll start to really take uh, take their number pretty... Yeah, you know, you take all of it with a grain of salt until you talk to a realtor, but I'll say it's usually pretty accurate. Uh, so they're putting the value at 267. Uh, apparently there's an outstanding mortgage for 16 grand on this. Let's see. Were they named in it? No. So we have a couple of liens here uh, from the government. We'll we'll cover all that too. But right now I'm just trying to get an idea of what it's worth. So let's do this. Let's um let's just start a uh, workbook here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have address. Um, you know we could put assessed value. I mean we can we could really build this out. But just for the you know, the sake of time, um, why don't we put uh, approximate market? Uh, from there, um, I would want to know uh, surviving liens. So I'm just going to put liens. And then maybe we can do one for bid. I may add another column in here. Um, but we'll, we'll start there. I mean, usually when these things are done, I'll, I'll kind of give you an idea of what this looks like when it's done. Um, you know, this is what it looks like when it's done. It's a, a lot more information in there, but if I'm just sort of doing this on the go, um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll build this as something small just to get an idea. Again, just building something out, um, to get an idea of where all this stands. Uh, realistically in this auction, I think the better play would be land just because everything in here that's a structure looks like it's a pretty high dollar amount so um okay so the the address let me go ahead and get that address here again uh what you have to do is you have to actually so it formats correctly just put it in your top search bar uh, let's go here uh Approximate market, I believe we said 267.846. We're going to call it two, uh, 268. Uh, 268. Let's make this a dollar. Uh, liens. Okay, well, we know there's a couple liens on here at least. And so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back. Let's just get the approximate values of all of these first. A few moments later. Okay. Um, so... Uh, what else do I need to know right out of the gate? I, I want to go into the property appraiser, right? So like, so I'm right now at this stage, I want to find zoning. I want to find um, more analysis on, you know, anything I can find in public record on this. So I'll go to the property appraiser first. Uh, and let's take a look on GIS. Let's see, you know, uh, let's see what we can find on this tax map viewer. Uh, I do not like Lee County's GIS system. Uh, if you ever used it, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's just not not a great GIS. Um, there's a company called Esri that does, uh, you know, like or sometimes you'll see ArcGIS in the URL. That's Esri. They do a pretty good job, um, and I like their software better uh, from a uh, end user standpoint. Um, Okay, again, we have, I think this was, uh, was it 10,000 square feet-ish? Um, there is a second building back there. This is the, I guess, detached garage, I'm guessing. Uh, what else? Let's see what else do we see in this area here. What else we got? How far from the coast are we? Oh, this is on 
Bonita Beach, and oh, and that's Tamiami. So, okay, so Fort Myers Beach is over here and to the north. Uh, okay, so we're we're just, you know, we're just checking it out on GIS, seeing what else is around. Um, and what else do I want to see? Again, I, I do want to see the title transfer history, because later I'm probably going to search the title on this thing. I want to know what is, uh, what's going on with that. So let's go to sales and transactions. Let's see what type of title transfer the last title transfer was. Uh, type is 01. That's usually a warranty deed. Um, let's just see. Let's take a picture and make sure it's a warranty deed. Great. Um, you know why I, I want to see a warranty deed as the last title transfer because essentially someone hit reset on the title uh, and they did it well enough so much that Sunshine Title and Escrow put their stamp of approval on it. Uh, there's certain verbiage in here that it guarantees to be encumbrance free. Uh, so let's see. See now this is a this is an ArcGIS map. It doesn't say. I want it to be X, but I'm assuming that it's fl it's flood zone A. That's probably what that is. And so A does require insurance. Um, you know, A will usually have a number associated with it, like it might be 10 AE, and that'll tell you like the base um, uh, the base flood elevation. Um, so uh, A does require insurance. Again, not a big deal. You just want to know everything you can know about these properties, right? Why wouldn't you want to do this research? Um, okay, what else we got? Uh, address, history, uh, location, parcel numbering, history. Okay, so, you know, there's, uh, it's really, you know, uh, there's more stuff we can do on here. Um, just, again, for the sake of time, let's, let's take this uh, a step further. Let's go to, um, let's just go to the next property and do the same thing. Go to Little John. You can break this up into nice simple easy to do sessions right um you know so let's uh we've got uh we've got little john cored up and uh, you know again i want to break these up into little easy to manage sessions maybe um you know a half hour to an hour at a time um you know, with the structures, it's a lot more work. You're doing a lot more work with these structures than you would be on uh, on vacant land. Uh, now, I don't know which way 19 faces. Uh, unit 19, I don't know if it's which way it faces, but uh, two bed, two bath, 983 square feet. First year the building was on tax roll was year 2000. Um, Okay, I mean, it looks very 2000. What else we got? Let's go look at the sales history. Uh, yeah, last sale was a warranty deed for 118,000. We'll just verify, make sure. Yep, warranty deed. Um, let's see, yeah, look at it. Look, looks like it was um, sold for 84 grand in 2001. It's the first real sale of the property. Uh, no, maybe not, because in 1999, that $100, it was a quick claim, but it's saying it was improved. So, um, yeah, well, maybe it's older than that. Uh, let's see, address history. Okay, July 27th, 1999. Um, third one, I'm going to go Brandon. This is in Fort Myers, a little bit different. Uh, property appraiser, the current property owner, uh, Patrick here. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do something different this time. We'll use this pictometry aerial viewer. Uh, if you never click on this link, it's a great link uh, if you're trying to get like a more recent picture of a property. Uh, sometimes these pictometry photos will be really like fairly current. You know, uh, so I'm filming this December 5th, 2021. Uh, this, you know, wouldn't be unrealistic to see pictures here from June of this year. Um, 
naturally. Uh, it didn't just take me to where I needed to be. It wouldn't be Lee County if it did. Um, okay, that's not... So, yeah, if you haven't used this pictometry link, don't bother, because it's, um, you know, it's garbage. Okay, um, let's, let's, let's look at the GIS, because we get a little bit more uh, from that. Oh, man, is my glare that bad? Wow. I'll wear next glass. I'll wear different glasses next time. Um, when I talk about glare, look at the glare on that car. That's something else. Uh, you don't really see that a lot. Um, fairly wooded. I don't really know when this photo's from. My guess would be um, probably mid to late 2020. Uh, it could be 2021, but I, I don't think it is. I think they're a little bit behind on their their GIS. Okay, um, uh, you know you can look around, see what else is in the neighborhood. We have a picture of the house in 2003. Look at those snake plants. My wife would lose it. She loves snake plants. She likes all plants. Uh, okay, um, I want to see sales history. I want to see. You know, uh, you know, I haven't checked for exemptions. Typically, the only exemptions I'm really considering or worrying about is a homestead. You just tell if they have those by looking at the opening bid. Uh, opening bid will be more than 50% of the, the assessed value. Um, and that would indicate uh, that it's a homestead property. What else does that mean for you? Not much. Just going to be more expensive um, opening bid. It's an older deed. It is a warranty deed. Um, really, again, we want to look for that verbiage. Hereby fully warrant the title said land defend unlawful yada yada. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, so, all right, and so we go through this. Now we've gone through all three properties for um, just again basics, right? We have a rough estimate on the price. Uh, nothing really standing out on the property appraiser on any of this stuff. We're just trying to, you know, uh, I didn't check the flood zone on the last one. Uh, let's, let's do it this way. Nope. See if this will tell us the, okay, so this is flood zone X. So Fort Myers, this is flood zone X. X means no insurance, no flood insurance necessary. Um, it's a good thing. Um, you know, again, flood insurance is just a requirement in certain areas. It's not like a deal killer by any means. You just want to know this going in. Especially if you're taking title to the property. It's something you would want to know. Uh, so, all right, then we what we would do is we'd log out. We'd be done for the day. And we would uh, come back. Uh, and let's go watch list. Okay, so we go to our watch list, um, you know, and essentially uh, what we're going to do here in this step is we're going to look for title info. Um, there's two ways to go about this. Um, I very much believe that the people who run these title searches are not perfect, um, nor am I, right? But I'm going to probably search the title myself on all this stuff doesn't hurt to look at the title search that they provide. Uh, if you did not know this, the county pulls a title search on every property that goes up for auction at a tax deed auction. When a tax deed application is filed through a tax lien, someone owns a tax lien and they want to foreclose, they file something called a tax deed application. And part of the fees in that tax deed application uh, are set aside to pull a title search on the property. Uh, so. Those title searches are made public record by the county, and they usually put them in different places. In Lee County, it's really easy to find those, so we'll take advantage of that by looking at the title searches they pulled. Now, this auction is in January. It means the title search was probably pulled sometime in, like, August. Uh, so you're going to want to bridge that gap on your own between August and January. Uh, search the title yourself anyway. I mean, it's, uh, it's entirely possible that liens will be put on there in the meantime.
one thing that I didn't cover in the previous part was looking at past assessed values This just sort of came to me, right? We want to look at the assessed values over the past and look for like sharp declines, right? If it's assessed at 140,000 and then overnight it's assessed at 41,000, like that's a red flag, right? And you would want to do a little bit more research. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the title. Uh, so I'm going to open up uh, 27... 625 and I'm gonna to go to this link down on the bottom here that says tax deed document so uh, open this and uh, it takes you to real TDM this is tax deed management this is through uh, real auction they provide this service we're gonna to go to documents and the last document here the tax deed document is where we're going so we're gonna to go to view and uh, we have a uh, couple documents that they're going to uh, put here. Let's make this bigger. A uh, couple documents that they're going to put here. Uh, these are all associated with the tax deed application. Uh, scroll, these are the fees. Uh, you know, and there's names for these documents. You know, uh, the D513, uh, D D, is it D or DR? D, D513, D512, you know. Uh, but once what we're really looking for is here this Allstate Florida title company is the one who pulled the title search and uh, Has a lot of information. We're going right to uh, This part right here encumbrances see exhibit a uh, It's good to check that's the same name on both right uh, so the, the owners on record live in Chicago uh, interesting let me Go back and check something here. Okay. Uh, owners on record live in Chicago. Uh, there is a lien, and we have an instrument number with that lien. Uh, there's another lien from the city of Bonita Springs. Uh, and then we have the uh, the regular assessments associated with it. So, you know, a lot of times in Lee County specifically, you'll see assessments here and... Uh, you know, some counties, you know, we have the instrument number. We can go search that instrument number in the county clerk page and find the document. But all state title does, uh, goes a step further. They're going to show us the last deed on record, uh, maybe sometimes the last two deeds on record, a uh, screenshot of the property appraiser page. Uh, it'll have all the taxing authorities where all the tax taxes go to. Uh, and more importantly get down here it'll have a picture of the liens associated with the property uh, let's see $24 2465 per month per unit payable term 360 months okay so you know we, we're gonna want to call uh, you know we're gonna want to call Bonita Springs utility and find out how much this is um, you know, we can sit here and read all this. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen a, a utility service lien that's, you know, payable over 360 months. That's a weird one. Uh, but, you know, it could be a significant amount of money. That's fine. Let's keep going. Uh, did they? No. Okay. Uh, should be another lien here. So you've been a special assessment lien against the property. Let's see. Okay, $375. This is a lot mowing lien. $375 at a 12% interest rate. And this was issued for 2019. Uh, no, it was okay. It it was issued in 2020. Yeah, so uh, so we're probably looking. We'll we'll call it 600 bucks. We'll round up, uh, and then we have the tax liens and taxes associated with it. Um, all these numbers down here. These are just all of the tax seed applications that this company filed in this county. So uh, 11th Talent LLC has filed 
quite a few tax deed applications in this county. Um, significant amount of money they've put out there at 18%. Great investment. We can talk about tax liens. If you're interested in tax liens, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to go over that stuff. Um, you know, that's where I really, um, what's that term, cut my teeth? I don't even know. But uh, really, uh, that's where I, you know, learned all this stuff is by doing tax liens for almost a decade. Um, so what we're looking at now, um, we've got a lien for roughly 600 bucks. Uh, we've got another one that I can't really assess. I don't really know how much it is. Um, you know, I want to bet that it's only a few months of this or do they haven't, they didn't stop paying in 1997 and there's that much left. Uh, yeah, this utility service lien executed in March. So this lien, I mean, again, it's possible it could be a significant amount of money, but you know, really where I'm going with this is here. There's a calculation that you want to run when you're figuring out what liens are surviving, how much you're willing to pay for a property, etc. Uh, if we go back to the opening bid, the opening bid on this property is uh, $8,200. And if we go to our notes, uh, property might be worth, you know, almost 270000 Really, the, the calculation that you need to think about, it's opening bid plus the sum of survivable outstanding liens. That number needs to be less than what you're willing to bid for the property because that's going to be your minimum cost. Because even if there isn't enough money to cover those surplus funds, you know, you're going to have to come out of pocket to uh, pay the rest of those off. Now, um, liens that survive are really, again, anything government. Uh, IRS is not included in that, nor is the SBA. Um, so uh, those are, um, you, you know, that's the calculation that you're looking at. So, again, opening bid plus the dollar amount on the sum of surviving government liens on the property. Uh, so for here, um, you know, again, I'm just going to round up. And this is a really, really tall round up. I'm going to say 10000 uh, do I, it's not, that, it's not that much, right? I mean, realistically, it's probably about $1,500. Uh, so, you know, uh, a bid on something like this, and I have a calculator, um, you know, a bid on something like this, on my end, it would be out of my budget, so I would throw the whole 100000 at it, right? Because we set that $100,000 budget on this property. Uh, really quickly, I'm just going to search the title on the other two. Let's do that. Um, so I'm going to go to Little John, tax deed document down here. We're going to go to the documents tab and we're going to go to the blast document here, the tax deed document. Let's make it bigger and let's scroll down to the title search. Okay, this looks like there's an HOA on here. Uh, let's see, encumbrances, see exhibit A. And there's a lien for the C, for the condo owners association. I'm not worried about that. And there are assessments on here too. Um, uh, it looks like the uh, the condo owners association actually filed to foreclose on this. There's a list pendants outstanding. I'm assuming it's outstanding. I don't know why it would be listed otherwise. Uh, claim a lien for unpaid assessment, so $3,700. They do not survive, but they will draw money from the uh, surplus funds. Uh, this was filed in 2019. There should have been a judgment on this by now. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, nothing really else to look at there. And let's go down to the third one. Brandon. Tax deed document documents last document on the page sometimes there's multiple pages you need to go to the last page uh, we're going to go down here see exhibit a and here's the encumbrances uh, capital one uh, and this is the registered agent for capital one so uh, then we have the lee county special assessments and all that stuff and that's um, you know those will be included in the taxes Okay, there was a mortgage borrowed 
83 to be paid off in 2013. Sometimes you see these mortgage documents here. Um, is this from Capital One? Is this what the Capital One... Signed, sealed, and delivered. That's right. BFC Mortgage Company. Uh, okay, so, oh, Chevy Chase. Wow, I used to bank with Chevy Chase. You know, they're really, they're only in like the Baltimore and DC area, as far as I know. Um, but uh, they got absorbed by Capital One, um, and then. Uh, I went to the University of Maryland, and the uh, stadium there was like Chevy Chase Stadium, and then uh, now it's Capital One. Uh, at least it was when I last time I checked. It could be something totally different now, as much as these banks buy one another. Um, so the uh, the lien on this this mortgage, I'm assuming this mortgage has actually been paid off. Uh, they probably haven't filed. Uh, a satisfaction of mortgage and that's why it's showing up in here uh, but it should have been paid off in 2013 I can tell you if they haven't paid their mortgage since 2013 you know there's they would have foreclosed already they would have got their money at some point so um, yeah that's pretty much it um, here's the let's see where is it Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, there's nothing really wrong with the title on any of these. Again, you want to bridge the gap yourself, and the way we would do that uh, is by taking the property owner, uh, so Patricia Southwick. So what we're going to do, I'm, I'll just show you how to bridge the gap. I'm going to search up Patricia. I'm going to copy the name exactly as it is on the property appraiser. Uh, let's just take one of these at random and go... Um, a clerk we're gonna search official records um, it's usually a there it is search official records and we are gonna search by name agree to the disclosures and paste now keep in mind the the begin date here is January 2010 if you're doing this title search yourself you're gonna to have to change that you're gonna to want to go back earlier Here's the satisfaction, uh, sorry, this is, this is a different satisfaction. Yes, satisfaction of mortgage. Well, I guess it's a different mortgage. Um, the only other thing in here from 2021 is just the, uh, uh, the tax deed application notice. So from when this title search was pulled from till today, there's nothing new on uh, Patricia here, so really that's enough for me to uh, um, you know I, I'm I'd be okay with this um, yeah I didn't realize how long I would go on this I kind of thought this would be a little bit quicker I'll tell you what I'll do uh, I'll do another video um, in uh, I don't know a couple days and I'll do uh, vacant lots in the same auction Again, Lee County the lots in Cape Coral are so valuable uh, same thing with Fort Myers really um, you know this whole county they're they're digging and building everywhere they can so we can come back and do another one of these um, listen if you have any questions um, by all means put them in the comment I'm happy to uh, oh, so, so I thought I was on zoom uh, yeah so uh, by all means if you have any questions if there's anything that um, that you want answered or if there's something specific that you're looking at um, Put something in the comments um, i'm happy to answer uh any questions that you have or do any auctions that you might be interested in uh, i'm hoping someone sees this somewhere uh you know i'm just kind of putting it out there to see see if uh someone can uh, be helpful